Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the integrated audit from the auditor's responsibilities perspective. What is an integrated audit? It's auditing the financial statement and the internal control over financial reporting at the same time. In the prior session, I introduced the concept of in introduction to integrated audit and I spoke about management responsibility. So I'm not going to go ahead and repeat what's integrated audit is. If you need to go to the prior session and I am no longer going to discuss management responsibility, I'm going to move to the auditor's responsibility. So what is the auditor's responsibility or what's the auditor's objective when it comes to integrated audit? Simply put, the auditor's objective is to express an opinion on the company's internal control over financial reporting. The, the question is, how? How do they get to that stage? How do they get to the point of expressing an opinion? Well, we're going to break this into five steps. The first step is they're going to plan the engagement, plan the integrated audit engagement. Two, they're going to use a top-down approach. Three, they are going to test and evaluate the design of internal control. They are going to test and evaluate the operating effectiveness. So first, we're going to test and evaluate the design. Then after we look at the design, we're going to see how effective it is. We're going to test it, test the operating effectiveness. And once we perform those four steps, we are going to issue an opinion on the effectiveness of internal control, which is reach our objective. Now, if you notice, there are five steps in this process. If you know anything about me, Farhat, once I have series of steps, I'm going to cover each step separately, starting with plan the engagement. Then I'll have a different, different session for the top down approach, test and evaluate the design, test and evaluate operating effectiveness. And we'll have a whole sec section about forming an opinion. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Let's start by plan the engagement. This is basically what we consider step one of five. Integrated audit first must be coordinated with the financial statement audit because it is part of it. It's very similar to the financial statement audit, how you plan for the integrated audit. It's just simply, how, do you remember? planning for the audit. What steps do you take during the planning process? Well, you would learn about the client industry. You would learn about any regulatory matters, economic conditions that affect the client. You would look at any technological changes that the, that the client is undergoing or the industry is undergoing. You look at the client business itself. You would learn about any recent changes in their operation. You would look at the economic condition. You would look at their capital structure. And the reason I am listing all these items, because on the CPA exam, they will try to kind of tell you what do we do at what stage? So at what stage, for example, we would evaluate the capital structure of the company during the planning stage, not during learning about or evaluating or testing the internal control. So you have to know what goes on during, during the planning stage. Now, if you are familiar with the regular audit, it's basically the same thing. Now, also keep in mind that the client's knowledge at the planning stage might differ from client to client. For example, the nature of the client, whether you have a prior client in this industry, or is this your first client in the software industry? The auditor's experience, how much experience do you have in this industry where the client is operating? Any information obtained from the prior auditor will change your planning of the engagement. If you have a lot of information versus a little, if you are told that it's, it's, a, it's a risky client versus it's, if it's not as risky as other, as other clients. Any previously disclosed communicated deficiencies, legal or regulatory matters. Well, not all clients will have those issues. Some will have it, others will not. Is this your first client in this industry? Or is this your first client? This is a first year client versus a second or third year client. And a second or third year client, all well, what you need to do, basically update your information. There is less work than, for example, if this was a first year client. So all these steps are conducted, 
conducted during the planning stage of an integrated audit. More about planning for an integrated audit? Well, you should take into account the result of the financial statement fraud risk assessment. Again, because you have to pay closer attention to certain things. What are those certain things? Well, significant or unusual transactions, especially that are reported toward the end of the year. At the, at the end of the year means the end of the period under audit. Related party transaction, that could be always a red flag. Significant management estimate. Anytime we have estimates involved, well, guess what? We have to pay closer attention. This could be a place where we can manipulate the financial statements. You have to look at incentives for management. Do they have incentive to falsify or inappropriately, inappropriately manage financial results? Because remember, when you have incentive, you already have one part of the tri triangle because incentive is one of them. Opportunity is the second. It doesn't have to be the second. Then rationalization. So if there is incentive, if they are if they are trying to get this audit because they need a loan from the bank, there is incentive. If they are doing this audit to issue new shares of equity, that's an incentive for management to man manipulate the number. Potential in incentive. Incentive or pressure, whatever, it's the same thing. Okay, then the opportunity is eliminated by proper internal control. So this is part of the fraud triangle. Now you have to also differentiate between audit of financial statements and audit for internal control. Because remember, private companies, they don't have to have their private means non-issuer. They don't have their internal control audited. So we have to know the difference you know, between the two. If your audit a financial statement, which is that's different versus you're auditing the financial statements and auditing the internal control. The auditor consideration on internal control for financial statement audit is different than that consideration of internal control for the internal control audit. Simply put, when you audit the internal control, you're performing an audit on internal control, the date is as a point of time, as of a date. So it's a point of time. Usually the last day of the client fiscal year. So that's about timing. So you have to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence of the effectiveness of the control as of a date, as of a point in time. This is if you're auditing the internal control. If you are learning about internal control for the financial statement audit, well, remember the financial statement cover A, period of time. Therefore, you are dealing with a period of time. Therefore, test of control, you have to do it throughout the year to meet the objective of obtaining sufficient appropriate evidence to support internal control. And remember to do what? To assess control risk. That's why we perform those procedures to learn about internal control to assess control risk. Versus up here, we have to issue an opinion about the internal control. So here, audit Audit on internal control, here we're issuing an opinion. All what we are doing here in the financial statement audit is learn about internal control. To do what? To assess the control risk. What For what purpose to determine whether we're gonna rely or not rely? That's, that's, that, that's the difference between the two. Usually, not usually, the financial statement audit, when we're assessing control risk, it covers a longer period of time. Also, during the planning stage, we have to be aware whether the client, we have a small client versus large clients. So the size does matter. Why? Because for small companies, many internal control objectives are achieved by direct senior management involvement and someone the involvement of the owner or the owners themselves, rather than formal policies and procedures. So if it's a small company for a non-issuer, you might see the owner or the founder or the senior management involved in internal control. They may not have formal procedures. So the key under those circumstances is to do what? Is to make sure that senior management are not overriding control. So so your your take, your approach is a little bit different during the planning stage because they don't have formal policies and procedures. Why? Because they're too small. Therefore, senior management is involved. Therefore, you have to look at the audit from a different perspective. Also, what becomes important in small companies is the role of the audit committee. Why? Because you need this oversight. So you need more involvement by the audit committee. Also, the degree of operation between various companies matters. So not only the size of the client, the degree of complexity. For example, if you are dealing with financial derivatives, well, versus selling just uh, books, two different type of risks. 
You have the financial derivatives. You have to have to understand mathematically how it's derived. Um, how are we deriving the value? It, it may not have public information. We might have to use discounted cash flow. Look at some uh, similar instruments versus just selling books. We buy a book for a certain cost. We sell it at a certain price. That's the end of the story. So the complexity is is not as as large as dealing with derivatives. Now, what I did in this session is I discussed planning the engagement, plan the engagement when it comes to integrated audit. And the reason I'm breaking this once again, because on the CPA exam, they will try to give you multiple choice. And basically all what the multiple choice is asking, this procedure, what does it fall under? Does it fall under plan the audit? under the top-down approach, under test and evaluate internal control. And that's why I want to keep it separate. And I teach. I'm not trying to review it going real quick through this. I want to break it into five different components. In the next session, we would look at the top-down approach. I believe that's important to understand the top-down approach. What should you do meanwhile? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources, multiple choice questions that's going to help you. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Accounting is worth it. The CPA exam is worth it. It only takes you two years, two to three years to finish. It's a lifetime investment. Stay safe.